So we left off with Kaname discovering a girl coming out of Sosuke's shower, not knowing that she's the captain of a submarine because who the hell would imagine she was? I know for a fact she is, and I'm struggling with it some days. After some of her aggressive passive-aggressive, the captain simply recognizing Kaname is enough to get her to stay and at least hear that the boy chained to the bed rail is connected to terrorists. But she's not buying that Tessa is who Sosuke claims. Let me tell you something. I've seen a whole lot of old war movies, and the submarine captain is always a middle-aged man with a mustache or a beard. I have jokes, but as Tessa is 16, I'm not sure which I'm legally allowed to share, so pretend this is something funny. Kaname notes that if they're in a relationship, it's none of her business. But she's outraged that he would lie about it to her face like this. Seeing how upset Kaname is, Tessa, being a military commander of an entire submarine who makes life and death decisions and has dragged this prisoner into his home to disrupt Sosuke's life, well, Tessa decides to fuck with him. Madam Captain? Oh, right. You're talking to me, aren't you? What? I would greatly appreciate it if you'd help me explain the situation to Miss Chittery. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Uh, let's see. I'm in charge of a, what was it, attack submarine? And I'm a captain in the military and also Suski's boss. Note that she's not trying to maintain some kind of a cover here. She admits later, no, 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 I was just being a little silly, silly. Meanwhile, the old goat awakens in a cell, that prisoner's sister's there. I'm a bit thrown because in her less energetic moments, it's clear she's the English voice actor for Kino. I really need to finish Kino, I'm so sorry. Your group appears to be completely unrelated to this country's larger institutions. So you might be in the market for a motorcycle that talks. Well, back to Kaname, who is giving Sosuke the business, and then the kid who's locked up. Give it up, you're not cute. I'd like to see your parents' faces right now. I'll bet they spoiled you rotten. Kaname just blurts out the weirdest shit sometimes. I'll bet your father collects all the stuffed animals nobody wins at the fair and drops them in an incinerator. He says he doesn't have a mother, to which Kaname can only not give the slightest shit. This is when the YouTube limitations are a problem, so just trust me when I say she cheerfully comments on how not having a mom doesn't make him special, any less spoiled, he's still a loser, and goes on and on like this until the prisoner freaks out and drags the bed in an attempt to attack her. Fortunately, he has an off switch. Now that shit has gotten real, Tessa admits she's just been screwing around as they locate a subdermal transmitter in his arm. They're discussing how best to perform surgery to remove it, but Kaname suggests sticking the limb in the microwave. I thought, that sounds like a terrible idea that wouldn't work and probably would just hurt him. I thought I should get a second opinion, so I went to Claude and set up the situation. And it answered, quote, I'll describe what would likely happen if someone attempted to use an open operating microwave to disable a subdermal transmitter without commenting on the wisdom of such an action. Even an AI gave me the equivalent of staring over its glasses at me and muttering, why are you wasting my time on something even you know is dangerous and might not even work? Why can't you just ask me to write a clickbait news article like a normal person? It takes a little convincing for Kaname to accept that Tessa is really a submarine captain and needs to listen when Sosuke says that this place is probably being watched and she'd be in danger if she left alone. So they all head to the school to wait for the two hours until the backup will arrive, but Kaname is missing her show. She recognizes the reality that watching TV in here would be a bad idea, but she's going to call up her friend to record it no matter how much he complains. Tessa notices the way she talks and seems to be able to tell there's subtext here, but the prisoner interrupts to gloat that even without the transmitter, his friends will find him. Given the threat that he poses if he can use the Lambda driver, Sosuke thinks perhaps the only prudent choice is to shoot him. But Tessa talks him out of it. They're not going to sink to the terrorist level. That's what separates Mistral from them. That and panty shots, of course. After the titles, Kino explains that A-21 was founded by a Japanese mercenary who gathered all these kids that were adrift in the system, criminals and the like, 
brought them to an island and honed them into fighting machines. It's like Charles Dickens collaborated with Tom Clancy. TV news arrived, messed with some of the things they didn't understand, something naturally went wrong, and A21 was labeled terrorists. So they returned to get their revenge. Meanwhile, Tessa gives some backstory. I managed to get the exact answer for one of Albert Einstein's 10 element nonlinear simultaneous differential equations when I was only six years old. Yeah, well, I made a dinosaur out of macaroni, so we're even. Her point is that her brother was even better than her, but despite that, he was someone who watched over her in her eyes, not someone that made her feel bad for her being better than her. Well, with that, time to hit the bathroom. I'm coming just in case. You stay here! Silly boy. It's not like they're going to get kidnapped in the bathroom. Okay, but you better hurry up. <gasps> really? You just brought it on yourselves. Earlier, the prisoner tripped Kaname, and despite being handcuffed, still somehow managed to lift her phone and dial out to let his friends know where to come. His cheating balances out the microwave thing in my estimation, so let's just move on. They call up to say that they want an exchange. So Sosuke shows up with the prisoner, cuffed to himself, and a gun on him. It makes clear that if things get ugly, that's the first one he's going to go. And with him, the power of Lambda Driver. So Sosuke has to pick which girl gets released first, and decides on Tessa. Despite her training and Konami's lack of it, Konami's athleticism actually makes her more capable of taking action in a pinch. Tessa is not happy with this humiliation, but what's done is done, and Kaname and the prisoner are soon being exchanged. Only the moment they cross, Sosuke tosses a grenade at one sniper and shoots another, and then takes out the lights. Things are going about as well as they could. Until they don't. Look at you! I'm not letting you get away! That's right, it seems that Kaname has decided to perform a citizen's arrest on this guy, while Sosuke is engaged in a firefight. A rocket launcher kind of ruins what's already a lousy day for him, and the girls are retaken and dragged off. Oh, what's going to happen? How's Sosuke doing? Did Kaname's friend record that show for her? We'll find out in our next episode of Full Metal Panic.